Welcome back. Today we're going to be going over how to make a blood splash particle in Unity. So let's jump right into it. Our first step is we need to go do some art. So I have these two blood splashes right here created. These were created in Affinity Designer. You can use whatever art program you like. Just note that you want it to be white and to be obviously a transparent texture. I also created this circle texture right here for small blood splashes effects. After you create those, you're gonna to wanna to go into Unity and let's set up our basic particle system first. So we're gonna right click, go to effects, particle system, and I will go over the ones I've already made. So this first particle looks like this. It's a burst of blue purple blood. The reason why it's blue and purple is the object that I wanna hit is blue and yellow. So I thought this would fit. So I'm gonna enable looping and hit play so you can just see it keep going. And we're gonna talk about our settings. So I like to lower my duration to something like one. I set my start lifetime, speed, and all of these to be random between two constants. You can do that by selecting this dropdown and hitting random between two constants. I'm gonna leave this on the screen for a second so you can see all of my numbers. The colors, as discussed, were like a blue and a purple. Uh, one thing of note is you can t enable gravity by setting this to one under gravity modifier, as well as on our stop action, we change it to destroy. That way we won't have a whole bunch of particles moving around in our scene. Under emission, we're gonna set our rate over time to be zero and set our burst to be 30. That, these are the default settings. I just press the plus to get those. My shape, I changed it to be a circle since this is a 2D game. You would have a sphere for a 3D game. And then I made sure my X rotation, which is negative 90 by default, was set to zero. This will orient it in the correct way for you to be able to see. Our next module that we enable is collision. All I did for this was hit the check mark. If you want to, you can change your bounce property right here. Mine's set to 0.25. This is how much it'll bounce off of things. Next is texture sheet animation. We change the mode from grid to sprites, and then we feed in whatever sprite we want our thing to look like. I did particle zero, which was just this star-shaped particle right here that I created in an earlier video. To get this trail effect, we enable the trails module. You can change the lifetime and the size of it with these settings. You can also use this graph to make it shrink over time. This will make it taper at the end. I'll leave these settings up on the screen for a second for you. Then we have our renderer. So our renderer needs to have two materials applied to it. I will use Sprite Unlit Default as I have 2D rendering uh, and lighting enabled in this project. You can use Sprite Lit Default if you do not. And then I also included default line texture for my line renderer. That should get this particle set up for you. After you create this particle, we're going to want to create our next particle. So we're gonna have a couple options here of the kind of effect that you want. So this effect is going to be a little bit different. So you notice there's a lot less particles that are played. I'm gonna hit play, or looping so you can see it. And this has a sub emitter, which you cannot see in this preview view. You can see it in. So once again, these settings are all pretty standard. I didn't do as many random between two consonants. I just did uh, smaller numbers. I'll leave these up for a second so you can see them. Do note that gravity is enabled and stop action should be on destroy. My emission is also set up to a burst. However, this is of a count of six as opposed to 30. My shape is circle. And again, I put my X rotation to be zero instead of negative 90. I enabled collision and once again did not change any settings here. I enabled sub emitters and I selected this trigger option. And then in this slot, we're gonna feed the second particle system we are making and I have it inherit color and set to 100% chance of the sub emitter happening. Texture sheet animation, I did my round particle, which is just that white circle, and I left the rest on default. On the renderer, I applied my sprite lit default material, and the rest is set on default. For our second particle system, we're gonna go over this before we do the script. This one is very similar so these are my settings for the basic stuff. For under emission, we only emit two particles and our shape is going to be circle. We will have collision enabled as we did on everyone else. Texture sheet feeding in a round particle again. And then our renderer, 
being lit and fall. Very simple particle here. Do you note that these move times are a lot shorter? Now let's go into the script. So we're going to trigger this particle to happen, the secondary particle, along the path of the main particle on an interval. This will allow us to have little spurts of blood as a big blob of blood. So we have references to both of our particle systems. This is system and subsystem. We have a private float for, to track our time. We have a public float that is our interval. In our update, we're gonna increase our timer by time.delta time. And while our timer is greater than or equal to the interval, we're gonna trigger our sub emitter and then we're gonna reduce our timer by our interval. So it just resets our timer. This triggered sub emitter line of code is the one that interfaces with our trigger sub emitter right here, it being set on trigger. I'm gonna hit play so we can see how this looks in game. You can see as these shoot off, you can see the other small particles spawning that kind of indicates the path that they are moving in. I thought this was a pretty cool blood effect. Our last bit is this decal. So you can see when we kill something, it splatters all over the terrain. This is a very good way of giving it a feel of being in your world. So let's go into that. That is what our, these two images right here were made for. So we start off by creating an empty game object and we are gonna attach a script to it. And then we create a child game object that just has a sprite renderer attached to it. We fed it one of our two blood splatters, set it to purple, which is on theme for the blood that I want. And make sure to set your alpha down a little bit. This will make it so, like on this brassiere or background elements, you can see the lines and the hint of the form of the thing that it's splashed on. And that makes it a lot more believable and feels a lot less artificial. So let's jump into this code real quick. It's a very basic script. What this is going to do is randomize which blood pattern we get. We have a private sprite renderer, renderer and then we have a, an array of sprites called blood. In the start, we're going to locate our sprite renderer in our component. I go over how this works in our dot video, looking at our all of our children to our parent game object, finding the one with the sprite renderer, and returning that. We get a random number between zero and the amount of possible blood options we have, and then we set the sprite equal to be that. Very simple setup. Then we just feed in our sprite options here from our art folder. One last thing of note is we set our mask interaction to be visible inside of mask. This will make it appear only where you want it to appear as opposed to everywhere. I'm going to disable this so we can see what it looks like without it. If you notice the particle call became visible again. Give it a second for one of the spit things to reach me. And you can see this blood splatter is on everything, including the air, which doesn't look realistic. So if we use our visible inside masks to do it, it'll only appear on the terrain. Now yours won't immediately do that because we have to set up something on our terrain. So let's do that real quick. You need to select any object in your scene that you want the blood to appear on. So for example, this ground here, we're gonna add a sprite mask component to it. And under sprite, we're gonna feed it whichever sprite is associated with that component. So for example, ground two, this image right here is my sprite that corresponds to my ground. I will drag that into my sprite here, and then I will get this orange border around it. This means that something with a sprite mask will render inside of that orange border, but otherwise it will not render. You do this for all your elements. So I did it for my braziers, I did it for my bushes, I did it for my ground, and so on and so forth. Now, if I look at my blood splatter, let me re-enable, make sure it's on visible inside mask, and I hit play, you will see it correctly splash onto the ground. Currently looping is still enabled, you would just disable that on the particle to get it to look properly. Our last bit is the code to make our particles actually spawn when we hit something. So let's jump right into that. Let me disable looping on both of these. So in my case, the spit prefab is the prefab that I'm trying to hit. So you go to that. So I'm going to open up my spit prefab and we are going to open up 
whatever script on it detects if the player hit it. In my case, I have a projectile script and it calls I can be hit, which is an interface that causes this function to trigger when it gets hit. All we need to do is set up three serialized private game objects, one for each of our things. So I've got my death particle, the blood splatter, and then the blood splatter particle, which is the more complex sub emitter particle. I show here how to set up all three. I currently disabled the death particle and keep the blood splatter and the blood splatter particle enabled. You can use whichever ones feel good to you. And now your particles will fire correctly. So here you can see the particles working as we want them to work. This is what the sub emitter particle enabled. If I can correctly hit one of these, you can see the decal, and then you can see the blood gush off in different directions. I hope you guys found this video interesting. Please comment below if you have any questions or would like to see anything else. Hit the like and subscribe buttons, and I will see you in the next one.